Hi folks, T. Stanley with you once again. Thanks for joining me. Uh, today I want to have a look at the Mighty Surge SSG or Smooth and Step Generator as it's otherwise known as. Uh, this is one of the legendary Surge modules uh, in that really highlights his design philosophy uh, with his systems and what I mean by that is this idea of patch programmability, which I guess Serge developed with his synthesizer system. And what that typically involves is the ability to uh, patch a module within itself to achieve different uh, functionalities or, you know, serve different purposes just depending on how it's patched. And this is fundamentally where surge systems differ to the other sort of typical modular systems that I guess he was inspired by. Uh, and, you know, he said it himself that his idea was, you know, to unpack some of the circuitry that was typically behind the panel and give the user access to some of that so they can determine how they want to use the module for their purposes instead of having the module or the designer dictate the purpose of the module and how it's used so that basically means that the surge modules and as this smooth and step generator really highlights you can you can coax a whole range of different functions out of just this one particular module and it's not at all obvious just from first glancing at the panel exactly the just the, the amount of functionality that is packed within this thing you know it's, it's a dense module and there's a lot you can do with it so i'm gonna hopefully try and unpack some of that and i guess demystify some of these uh features and functions that are on the panel because it's somewhat I wouldn't say it's cryptic, but it's it's definitely unusual for, I guess, uh, typical sort of synthesis parameters, you know, like there's, in the center of this section that's boxed in has these two outputs named coupler and hot, and they're not at all obvious exactly what they do straight away, but we'll come back to that and we'll unpack that and uh yeah so like i was saying this thing is a patch programmability monster and i'm gonna i'm gonna link to doug Liner's excellent video where he's put together a you know a whole series of patches that you can uh effectively use to coax all these different functionality um and just different use case purposes out of this module you know like you can do a lot with it as i was saying and he's done an excellent demonstration on how you can get the most out of it so i'll link to that in the description but i'm just going to go over what we see at first looking at the panel and i guess it's pretty obvious by the name of the module itself and then looking at the uh, actual panel you have the smooth and step generators and it's split into two sides as you can sort of see and then there's the center uh, section the coupler section uh, as I was talking about just before so each side behaves differently and basically in a nutshell the module can either output smooth and stepped voltages you know respectively for each side or it can manipulate voltages for each side in smooth and stepped sort of fashion. So that sort of doesn't really explain a great deal what you can get out of it, but typically that's the kind of behavior that this module has. So it's got inputs, you know, each side has its input for external signals that you can put into it to process and it has its outputs as well 
So this module can output signals as well without any kind of form of input. So you can create voltages or audio with it uh, without any kind of external input. But just the combination of the jacks and the inputs and outputs and the controls that you have just allows us to really just explore different ways of these sort of sides and parameters in you know you can, you can get them to interact in very interesting ways and <coughs> oh excuse me you can you can really uh just explore this thing endlessly there's so much you can do with it but i'm gonna try and go over i guess the main parameters firstly and then try and I guess describe some of the use cases and hopefully some useful functions you can get out of it. So, like I was saying, you've got your ins and outs. Uh, these red uh, jacks here are the cycle. These are two cycle jacks are outputs, and these output a gate at the end of the cycle of each uh, smooth or step side. So. Effectively, these can uh, have this cycle mode, and this particular version of this module has these toggle switches down here, you can see, and Random Source have been really good in giving us these toggle switches, which are more or less shortcuts for some of the main, most commonly used sort of patch programming techniques that users used to employ on the like the earlier uh, editions of the module you, like in the earlier versions you didn't have the toggle switches and if you wanted to achieve the cycling behavior for each side you were required to patch from the cycle output to the input so let's just do that and I'll show you what happens so you can see the LED or the uh, light is now showing how that's cycling and this effectively is now functioning like an oscillator or a cyclic modulation uh, on the bottom we have these two controls and this one on the left is the rate so obviously that controls the rate of this cycle and you can see the lead reflect the behavior in the rate and then beside that on the right we have the voltage control with an input and a scalar or ten inverter to control the amount. So the voltage it's effectively voltage controllable at this rate. So this gives it several different functions you could use this for is uh, LFO like and by default it's outputting a, a triangle I believe. So let's have a listen. If we take the output and we'll run straight to the mixer here this is sub audio rate but you can see it on the scope it's not quite triangular but you can see a cycling modulation there and if we increase the rate we start to get into the audible range and you can see it become more triangular as we increase the frequency Now you can also use uh, DC offset or you know constant voltages to extend the range of this rate. So if we were to take an offset, uh, I'll just patch one from my system here to the voltage control input. We can effectively get. We can go well below the audio rate, and I'll just disengage this exponential switch, which I didn't realise was engaged. I'll talk about that in a sec. But you can see now the rate is really, really so slow that the scope's not able to track it. So. 
So that's an effective way to increase the range. Okay, so we can take that out. That little patch connection there and just engage the same connection with this toggle switch here, which is just a shortcut. So now you can see that in cycle mode and we don't need to make that connection. Okay, so the exponential toggle switch uh, is a shortcut for another a, another common patch uh, connection that was used to be commonly made by taking the output and then patching that back to the voltage controlled rate input. So if we turn that up now, this changes the behavior of the signal from a, a, a line, it scales linearly to now non-linearly or exponential. As you can see on the scope, it's a rather different shape, more of an exponential shape. And now we can remove that connection. Ah, oh, shit. Sorry guys. Yeah, my setup is a bit, a bit shonky. Kind of balancing my uh, camera. It's not very stable, as you can tell. Anyway, we'll take that connection out, and we just have the exponential switch to sh get that shortcut again. So that's what those toggle switches are there for. Uh, now. Let's have a look at some of the other types of functions you can get from the smooth side is a slew or a portamento type effect. So what I'll do is take, I have a Turing machine here which can uh, output, uh, I'm just trying to find a clock source here, let's I'll take Dixie. Bear with me, I've just got cables going everywhere here. Knocking shit over again. I'm just going to send this square Dixie to the clock input of the Turing machine here, and we're going to send the voltage from that Turing machine to the input on the smooth side. And we don't, uh, yeah, we don't want that in cycle mode because we want to we want to process the input. So, and then we're going to take the voltage output from the smooth side to an oscillator. So this is the NTO. Uh, actually, we have a connection made. I'll just. That. So now we can hear that, if we have the rate up at max, maximum amount, it's the fastest rate and it will effectively sound like there's no slew or portamento. And if we turn that dial back anti-clockwise, we're effectively slowing that rate down and increasing the time it takes for the voltages to reach the next value. Now you can hear that slew. You can have exponential behavior again. So we'll just turn that into a loop. that slew allowing us to slide between notes so what you can also do is use the smooth side as a non-resonant low-pass filter so 
then we'll take the oscillator audio to our input smooth side input and then just take the output and increase the rate amount to open it right up as if you would with the cutoff on a filter and the rate effectively acts like a cutoff so if we use a sawtooth and then slow that rate down effectively you can filter out the higher harmonics and overtones like a low pass filter except it won't close all the way and then exponential so there's another useful function a function you can get out of the smooth side you can get it to actually behave like a low pass gate if you feed an envelope to the voltage control input like that there and then trigger oh, just take the output back to the mixer again Down. So the effect, effectively, depending on the envelope shape, you can get kind of low pass gate behaviour. If you bring that rate up a little bit. So you can do that. <clears throat> and there's a whole bunch of other things you can do with the smooth side that's by no means exhaustive of what you can do. It can behave like a track and hold using this hold input. If you send gates to that, it will hold the value of the input until the gate effectively goes low. Uh, you can actually get it to behave like a sample and hold if you've got the right modules to do it. Uh, I won't go into that right now either because we'll be here all day. But I'm going to go move on to the step side, which is also interesting and has a whole range of functions that you can use it for. Um, you know, different kinds of functions that you would use from the step side, oh, the smooth side, sorry. So let's have a look. Again, it's laid out very much the same. The biggest difference on the step side, and this is crucial to using it really, like is this sample input. And the step side's not actually going to do a damn thing until you feed it triggers or gates to the sample input here. So it will cycle itself much like the smooth side, but it's not going to actually do anything until it gets starts getting a trigger or a pulse so now you can start see you can see the light now we've got some gates coming to the sample input the light is effectively showing the voltage behavior coming out of it so let's have a listen again we'll take the output i'm gonna need a longer cable we'll take the output of the step to the volproductive input of our oscillator and then let's just take the oscillator to the mixer so we can hear it and you can hear that step voltage pattern coming out of it now and I'm going to change the wave shape from our oscillator now if we bring this rate control here down Effectively, it decreases the range between each step. So now you can hear that the steps are closer together in like terms of voltage. So it sounds more like a staircase 
opposed to larger, more random sounding values. And if we decrease it all the way, it becomes so close that it sounds like a smooth or non-changing voltage. So it's so slow and the steps are so close together that it sounds almost smooth. When we slowly increase it, we have staircase again. So it's useful to use this like a sample and hold and this is actually like as far as sample and holds go this is the best sample and hold I've encountered like this module has the best behavior of a sample and hold that I've come across in, in as far as holding a voltage because uh, effectively with an analog sample and hold you encounter what's called voltage droop if you if you don't already know this. So when you hold a value with a sample and hold, it receives a trigger or a gate to hold a value. Over time, that value will decrease slowly. Uh, it's it's not, most sample and holds are pretty good like that. They're not super noticeable, but some of them, and some that I've used it's quite apparent especially if you've got like you start pushing the limits of your power system and so on uh, you'll encounter this voltage droop where it's there's a noticeable droop in the voltage over time and well for what I was getting at this, this step generator is probably the best like has the best hold function I've come across from any sample and hold so there's very very little voltage droop over a long period of time with this thing so it's yeah it's it's really excellent for that purpose so <clears throat> I'm just gonna patch in a bit of a random uh, uh, random signal so we can sample from it and uh, it's just I'm just gonna set up this patch here so um, I'm just doing some crazy FM because the noise source I have isn't that effective with this module for some reason probably because it's not a surge module this they're kind of finicky they have different voltage um, what's well sort of it's based on a different sort of voltage range I guess uh, I don't want to get too far into that it's getting way off topic but effectively I've got this sort of uh, we'll sample that from, I'll take a sample from the smooth side, but we'll patch this signal into the step side input. And now we'll take a sample from the smooth side cycle output. Let's have a listen. And if we turn that rate right up, we increase the range again, like I was saying. So you can hear it's just random, like spinning out pretty random voltages. If we increase the speed of the smooth side, we're getting it all the way till it's just almost noise. So effectively have a random sample and hold there. Now if you want to take that further and get smooth random voltages, you can take the random volt step voltage output and then feed that to the input of the smooth side and then take the coupler output 
and I'll explain this in a moment. The coupler output to the, the sample input of the step side. And then if we want smooth random, we can take it from the smooth side. And disengage the cycle mode. So you can hear just like a random fluctuating smooth voltage. And if you want random gates, you can also take them from the coupler output as well. So, uh, let's just do that. I'll trigger this envelope, which is... Just triggering some noise here on another trailer, you can hear. But as you can hear, we've got smooth random, random gates, and then a stepped random voltage. So that's a, just another good example of patch programmability. So you can get a whole bunch of different functions just on ways you can patch it. Yeah. This middle section, the coupler, I'll, I'll explain this quickly before we wrap this up. The coupler is basically a logic gate comparator. So what that does is outputs a gate signal that's either going to be high or low. And these are both uh, gate outputs. They're both the same except they're different. Um, they're in different voltages. I think the hot output outputs high and low values are extremely wide in range that are almost as wide as the power rails of the system itself so it's almost like minus plus minus 12 volts it's super hot which is why it's labeled hot so be careful using that uh, <coughs> particularly if you're using that as an audio source uh, yeah, so it behaves, I think it's, if the step, I think the coupler goes high if the uh, step side is higher in voltage than the smooth side. So let's cycle that and just, uh, we'll just see. So, um, take that here and we'll take... Uh, sorry guys. Sorry about that. We'll um take a clock signal from our LFO down here, which you can't see, but um Turn the exponential off, and then we'll take the coupler gate output to trigger our noise again, and just see if we can see what's going on. We'll slow that down. We'll slow that down. So I think I was wrong, I think it's the smooth side. So if the smooth side voltage is higher than the stepped output, it will output a high gate signal from the coupler. I guess we can use an uh, offset to test that. If we go to the input, and just increase that. No, I was right. It's if the stepped. No, it is if the smooth output is higher than the stepped output, it goes high 
from what I can tell. So there you have it. Again, this is by no means exhaustive of what you can get out of this module. It's super fun to experiment with cross-patching of all sorts. Uh, you can get some really crazy and wacky results when you start getting into the audio rate uh, modulations and effectively I'll just do a quick demo just so you can grasp how wacky this thing can get I love wacky sounds so <laughs> just uh, if you're not interested probably skip this bit um, we'll take the smooth side again to sample the stepped side step side we hear some pretty crazy modulations there so like I was saying change the wave shape Just to the exponential voltage control input on the module, not the volt per octave. I'll just tweak parameters now. Patch the stepped output, and mount that output to voltage control rate input on the smooth slide. Let's have a listen to what the coupler might sound like now in another channel. So that's the coupler output coming in. You can just hear that by itself. This is just the coupler output now. Cross modulation from the smooth out to the input of the step side. So I don't know if this is going to do much. Some sort of pulse with this modulation. There's some rich tones as well as you can hear. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. If you've got any comments, questions, queries and anything like that, feel free to drop a line in the comments. I'll do my best to help out. Uh, yeah, if you've got any requests for looking at other search modules, also drop a line. Uh, 
I think I'm going to look at one of the filters in the next video because they're definitely pretty interesting also. Uh, and yeah, I hope this has been helpful and uh, somewhat informative. So I'll thank you again for your time and patience and for watching. So till next time, take care and I'll see you then.